Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we'll be testing the agility of a bay boat style catamaran, the SeaCat 260 Hybrid. The bow seating completely blends in with the large forward casting deck. This is where the catamaran style and the bay style blended so perfect together. For those who desire a boat that shines in beauty and functionality, we'll be looking at the Glassstream 280 SCX. In fact, they're at the forefront of the industry when it comes right down to offering these features in a boat that can double as a fishing boat over a poker run style boat rather than the other way around. And for the serious saltwater tournament angler, we'll be taking a look at the Camus 341cc. I love the fact that the bow is high enough to where it'll handle really big waves offshore, but back in the cockpit, I can reach the water to grab a billfish. Ideal shear line. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. What's the best boat for you? Whether you desire precision while pulling across the shallowest of flats, the ability to roam a variety of destinations from inshore to offshore, no boundaries while in vast expanses of open ocean, or you just want to create lasting memories with friends and family on the water. Join Florida Sportsman's trusted boating experts as they review the latest from today's most popular boating manufacturers to help you decide which is the best boat for you. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Guys, we got three great boats today, each for a different mission. We're gonna start by looking at the Seacat 260 Hybrid. Let me tell you, cats have been evolving and this one I can't wait to get on. She's got some features we're gonna love. We're also gonna be looking at the Glassstream 280 SCX. Now this is a poker run boat, but not only is she a poker run boat, she can entertain the whole entire family on that run. It's a good looking boat. It is a good looking boat, Lori. You know what, last but not least, we're gonna be looking at a boat from Camus, and this is an offshore boat from them, a 341, and they're building bigger and bigger boats. They're getting not away from the bay boat mold, but they're getting more and more into offshore boat building, and this boat, you definitely don't wanna miss it. What do you say we get started right away? When we return, our hosts take a look at a boat that handles both offshore and inshore waters with ease the SeaCat 260 Hybrid. But first, let's join FS host Lori Hargrave as she discusses the FWC's Zero Tolerance Policy in this week's seminar series. FWC wants to remind you that there's a Zero Tolerance Policy operating a vessel while impaired on the water. Everyone knows it's illegal to be under the influence while driving a vehicle. Well, the same rules apply to boating. Instead of a DUI, it's actually called a BUI. FWC reported that 32% of fatalities in 2019 were alcohol and drug related. If you're going to indulge on the water, be safe, have a designated driver, or you can even hire a captain for the day. Like me, I like to have fun on the water, but I'm gonna be safe. This segment brought to you by Fishing Nosara, the best sport fishing in Costa Rica. Fishing Nassara, Costa Rica's best sport fishing. Fight the world's baddest fish with top quality boats, professional tackle, and family friendly English speaking captains. Stay in the authentic nature preserve with wildlife at your doorstep. World class surfing, nature tours, yoga, and fine dining are all at your fingertips in Nosara. Packages start at $700 per person. Don't delay, book today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they step aboard the SeaCat 260 Hybrid, a hybrid catamaran designed to comfortably cruise the river and venture beyond the inlet. The SeaCat 260 Hybrid has an overall length of 26 feet, a beam of eight feet, six inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Built for handling rougher waters and floating shallow, she has a draft of 14 inches a dry weight of 4,900 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 120 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. George, Rick, today we're on the SeaCat 260. And first thing that came to my mind was, you got a bay boat and a catamaran boat, and the styles just combined together and became one. You know what, you're right, Lori. One of the disadvantages of a lot of bay boats is having enough room inside. They're skinny and they just, they're limited. 
One of the great advantages of cats is having so much interior square footage. I'm anxious to see how they added the square footage to this and how they used it on the Seacat 260. That's a good point, Rick. And you know what? It seems like we run a lot more cat boats. I mean, year after year, we see more and more of them. And I've run a bunch of them. I've never run one that was a really an inshore boat. So I'm curious myself to see how this thing's gonna do. The ocean on this day was not cooperating due to a hurricane swell, closing the door to the Jupiter Inlet, but we found what we needed inshore to gain confidence in the 260's ability. The ride on the model we tested was that of a high performance boat capable of extremely high speeds due to the power choice. This boat can be rigged with as little as a pair of 140's and up to 600 horsepower, which is exactly what our twin Suzuki 300's provided. A top speed of 65 miles an hour seemed much faster, and at a cruising speed of 38, we were seeing two miles per gallon. At the helm, a pair of Solix 12-inch MFD units with Chirp radar fit nicely on the panel, and all quality Bocatec switches are used. A meticulously neat wiring scheme inside of the console is laid out in an easy to understand system, which also comes with a schematic explaining the function of each wire from switch to battery. A twin LeBrock seat set in front backs up to a roomy tackle center rocket launcher in the cockpit. An interesting design feature on the 260 is the way these boats are set up with independent batteries and fuel tanks for each engine. This allows you to always have the security of knowing that you'll have one engine to get home on if the other one fails. The design of this hull is such that the 260 will easily handle running speed on a single engine, so you're not limping back to the dock at trolling speed. What happens when you're dealing with a beamy cat boat? Well, for starters, Lori and I were sitting up in front of the console on this seat up there. Plenty of room, much more than you'd see on a 26-foot V-hull. Any boat that's fishing in shallow water has got a platform for somebody to stand up there and cast. The Seacat 260 Hybrid has a casting platform so big that Lori and I weren't even aware that each other were fishing off of it. The bow seating completely blends in with the large forward casting deck. This is where the catamaran style and the bay style blended so perfect together. Having the catamaran style gives you the 8-6 beam throughout the entire boat. There was no waste of space today. There is storage under your port and starboard lounge seat. Storage under the step up to the bow and multiple storage compartments on the bow deck. One of the things that makes the Seacat 260 so versatile is the fact that she's got a trolling motor on her. She can go as far offshore if you want to, but when you come back in short, you can silently creep down a row of docks or flip up under a mangrove. The very word hybrid means that this boat's capable of doing so many different things. You're gonna need offshore tackle, but you're also gonna need the tackle for flipping shrimp up under a dock. You can store it all in the tackle station behind the helm. There's a rigging tray there, there's a cooler. It is an excellent use of space. Let me tell you, they broke down the stern to do a whole lot of different things. First off, you can flip the seat up and you've got a great place for cruising the intercoastal. Flip it down and you've got an excellent casting platform. You need live shrimp for stopping by a dock on the way home, you got a live well for that. You got live blue runners to chase sailfish in the live well directly across from there. The stern area of this boat may be the very definition of a hybrid boat. Guys, you know, I own a bay boat. So I was looking forward to today because I'm sitting there going, bay boat, catamaran, how is that gonna work? Well, it did, it worked. It was, she ran great today. You know what, Lori, I'll tell you what it did for me is, I was curious about how is a cat boat gonna work in the backwater. As it happens, it's blowing 25, 30 miles an hour today and we weren't able to get this boat out in the ocean. Jupiter Inlet just said, no way. But the versatility came out in the boat. We had to pivot and go in the backwater and look how well it did back in that skinny water and in those tight quarters, it was great. You guys are both right. Why combine a cat and a bay boat? Because a bay boat gets in the back country and a cat has lots of real estate and is very, very stable. You wanna see what it means to fish on a true fishing platform? You need to check out the Seacat 260. When we return, our hosts examine a sturdy fishing platform with a beautiful finish, the Glassstream 280 SCX. This segment brought to you by FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Boating is a great way to relax, but staying safe means being aware. 
get distracted. Always pay attention to your surroundings. Be aware of other boaters. Stay focused, stay alert. The marine environment is constantly changing. Stay safe and be aware. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they step aboard the Glassstream 280 SCX, a center console fishing boat with tons of style and plenty of comfort. The Glassstream 280 SCX has an overall length of 27 feet 8 inches, a beam of 8 feet 5 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 450. Designed to venture offshore in moderate conditions, she has a draft of 18 inches, a dead rise of 24 degrees, a weight of 5,900 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 135 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Quick, name a boat company over the years we've had more fun on than the glass streams. And let me tell you, this 280 SCX looks like she's got fun written all over. This boat's got a lot to offer for the non-fishermen. What do you say you let me do a little bit of fishing with the girls back here, and then we go see how much fun we can have doing non-fishing stuff. Sound good? Sounds good. With the rise in popularity in recreational boating done in the name of relaxation and cruising over fishing under certain circumstances, the need for a boat that offers comfort and amenities slanted towards that end hasn't been lost on glass stream boats. In fact, they're at the forefront of the industry when it comes right down to offering these features in a boat that can double as a fishing boat over a poker run style boat rather than the other way around. You know what pretty much all boats have in common? They're all designed to take you to a fun destination, whether it's fishing or partying. Glassstream understands like nobody else that the fun is in the run. The 280 SCX model shares the performance aspects of her sister ship, the 280 Pro XS, only offered in a deck layout more thoughtfully arranged for a group of friends to socialize between stops at the local anchorage or sandbar or to a poker run watering hole tie up or a dinner cruise. Something of note about the 280 SCX is the fact that for such a sporty performance style hull, she offers pretty enviable fuel numbers for a boat rigged in this class. Rigged with a pair of 200 horse Mercuries, this boat delivers 3.4 miles per gallon cruising at 40 miles an hour. You can't hope for any more than that. And with a range of greater than 400 miles on a single tank, you might find yourself in a high performance boat that passes everything, including the fuel dock. The model we tested was equipped with a radar arch hardtop, which lends a sportier look for the poker run crowd. However, you can equip this model with an optional T-top, hardtop without riggers to more effectively balance out the boat's intended purpose between fishing and cruising. At the bow, there were two jump seats, one port side, one starboard side. Under each seat is an insulated storage box, which today our port side was our cooler and our starboard side housed our ice for the AC system. Inside the console, there was a head, plenty of room to stand, and I always use this area for storage. It's just easy to throw everything in there and it's easy to access. Inside the cabin, there was plenty of room for two to sleep easily. But you also had a sink and storage underneath the cushions. I love the forward seats. Why? Because you can use them to stand up on the bow for excellent visibility when you're sight fishing. She can be rigged for trolling a blue water spread and the rod storage is both ample and easy to get to. Having the girls today, I wanted to do something a little bit different at the sandbar. The guys are always happy with sandwiches and chips, but I really wanted to impress the girls and show how fun it is to entertain on this boat. I set up a cheese board, made some drinks, and we were ready for girl talk and laughs. In the stern, you have an aft bench seat with wraparound combing bolsters and a backrest nestled in between two live wells. Believe you me, if you want to look good while you're going fast or sitting still, or whether you're trolling or looking for a cobia, the Glassstream 280 SCX delivers a lot of SPG. Oh, what does that mean? Smiles per gallon. Well guys, if nothing else, we proved something today, and that's that you can have fun on a boat without having a fishing rod in your hand all day. I've been telling you guys this for years. It's not always about fishing when we go out on the boat. I like to fish too, but we all know I like to have a good time. I like to go to the sandbar, I like to hang out with friends, 
cruise the river. We did that today and I think you guys had fun. Yeah, I hate to admit it, I really did. I tell you, blue water fishing to me is all about adrenaline. And when that billfish comes up to a bait, my adrenaline's pumping. I felt that same rush today. We were cruising along there about 35 and George punched those throttles. I can tell you one thing, the Glass Stream 280 SCX is meant to get your adrenaline pumping. When we come back, our hosts step aboard a fishing boat designed for hardcore anglers, the Camus 341cc. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system the all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they check out the Camus 341cc, a serious center console fishing platform that incorporates ample comfort and amenities. The Camus 341cc has an overall length of 33 feet 6 inches, a beam of 10 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 1,200. Designed for commanding blue water adventure, she has a draft of 27 inches, a dead rise of 23 degrees, a dry weight of 9,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 345 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Cap, let me tell you something. Walking down the dock this morning, what a thrill. The Camus 341. We're used to their bay boats. They build great ones. This thing is a serious fishing machine. You're not kidding, Rick. I'll tell you what, man. I've been excited about getting on this boat since the day I found out we were gonna have them. I've been really excited about seeing it since Miami Boat Show, where I missed the boat. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of stuff to look at on this rig. I mean, there's a lot of fish ability, but there's a lot of other kind of little hidden things around the boat I wanna check out. We got a lot to dive into. We do, I tell you, this thing is a serious fishing machine with a camouflage family boat inside of it. Let's get going. You know, one of the best parts about my job is walking down the dock that first morning and being introduced to a new boat. Let me tell you, when I walked down and saw the Camus 341, my first thought was, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. These are not the Camus Bay boats that we've grown to love over the years. The 341cc from Camus represents the largest offering to date from this company. And one quick look around before we rolled out made it immediately clear that plenty of thought went into this model. The need to maximize the usefulness of every inch of deck space isn't limited to the smaller base style boats we've seen from this brand in the past. Taking full advantage of any work surface to maximize efficiency can make the difference between a good boat and a great one. I tell you what, it took a lot of design to come up with the shear line of the 341. I love the fact that the bow is high enough to where it'll handle really big waves offshore, but back in the cockpit, I can reach the water to grab a billfish. Ideal shear line. A pair of forward benches to port and starboard fold down into a flush pocket that merges seamlessly together into the inner liner when stowed. A similar bench in the cockpit spans the transom and stows out of sight in the same way. Just in case the invisible seating up in that wide open bow wasn't enough, just lift the tops of the seats there's storage underneath for stuff you don't want to go to the transom to get. That wonderfully comfortable lounge ahead of the console doubles as massive storage. You need to pack stuff for the weekend, it all fits in there. It's out of sight, it's out of mind until you need it. The helm face features a very nice heads up perspective for the driver at the port side and room for a pair of 17 inch multifunction display units along with full instrumentation. The hardtop and enclosure integrate neatly into the console forward and helm station aft using platform D-tubing powder-coated pipework that maximizes clearance around the deck surrounding the workspace. They did a fabulous job inside the console. Listen to this now. It's got a head, it's got a sink, it's got plenty of storage room, it's even got fold-out storage, all in an area that seems like it's too small to give you that much accessibility. How smart is Camus? Well, I'll give you an example. You put your hose, fresh water and salt water, 
amidships. That way you can reach every area of the boat with half the hose. It's not difficult, it's a brilliantly simple idea. The fishability of this model is definitely on point. A helm station work area in the pit featuring rod holders and tackle storage makes setting up for action simple. A frigid rigid fiberglass bait or drink cooler, which is on a sliding track, doubles as a rear facing seat. For serious live baiters, a 70 gallon well in the transom powered by a hooker sea chest pump system with dual 2500 gallon adjustable pumps won't let you down when having enough bait is critical. In the cockpit deck are a pair of separate compartments, one for access to your bilge systems and a second forward compartment that's offered as a 240 quart fish box, a secondary live well, or the space can also be used to mount a sea keeper gyro stabilizer. A wide dive door is built into port for landing your trophy catch, but also provides an easy entry point into the water. These are always a welcome addition for dockside boarding as well. Whether you're out for a relaxing ride with the family or friends, for serious blue water game fishing, this model from Camus has taken all of the details into consideration. Combine this fact with the comfortable ride offered by the Michael Peters designed stepped V ventilated tunnel hull, and we all agreed that the 341 center console from Camus should be a welcome addition to their line. Well, Rick, let me tell you something. When we started out this morning, I said that I was really excited about getting on this boat, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the reasons was I'm telling you, I know that Earl Benson has got a lot of history building bigger boats than he has currently in the Camus line. And coming up to a 34-footer, it's not the biggest boat he's ever done, but I was really curious to see what direction he was going to take with this hull and this design in his first bigger boat in this, in this brand. And man, I wasn't disappointed. The boat runs like a champ. I mean, it was just, it, it lived up to every expectation I had of it. And also, the other thing was, when I got on the boat, looked at all these features that were kind of hidden away, and there was a lot of hidden stuff that I wanted to look at. And, and uh, you know, as I said, I wasn't disappointed about that either. A lot going on in this boat. Hidden stuff. Did you ever see the movie The Transformers where something looks like something, but then it's really something else? Exactly. You could tell the minute you stepped on board this boat that it was built by a longtime boat builder that knew big boats coming and going. This Camus 341cc is ready to go through just about any ocean you could ever dish out for it. But with a flip of a few switches, you can turn this thing into the finest family boat you ever want to see. I was very impressed with the way that day went. Those were three great boats and each with a unique purpose today. You're right, Lori. Hey, if you want any more information about those three boats or any boat you see on Best Boat, visit us at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Make sure to join us next week on Florida Sportsman Best Boat as we take a look at the Avid 23 FS Magnum, the Stingray 269, and the Century 2900 CC.